Hey guys, and welcome to tonight's conversation about grief. And so you guys, I'm just excited about having this conversation tonight. And if this is your first time ever watching one of my videos, I wanna welcome you. So my name is Casey Starlong and what I try to do most days, it's been a while since I've been on uh, this online streaming, but what I try to do is really just have conversations and I use media to point the way to Jesus Christ. Um, and, you know, God has just really been placing on my heart about the importance of having a conversation about grief. We are in the midst of this pandemic. If you are watching this live, you know where we are. Prayerfully, this vaccine is going to help change lives and all that, regardless of where you are on the spectrum about whether or not you'll you'll take the vaccine. Um, but, you know, we are we're going into, I believe, like the ninth month of a pandemic. And I don't know about you, but there have been a lot of friends that I know and people that I care about, you know, they have been impacted by grief. Um, and there have even been some situations in my life um, recently where, you know, I have just had to grieve, you know, grieving what once was. And so whether you are walking through grief with the loss of a loved one, um, just a loss in your life, I want to encourage you to just lean in to this conversation. And maybe you're not dealing with a season of grief, but maybe you're surrounded by loved ones who are going through this season of grief and you are going right beside them. You are helping carry their burdens. I believe our conversation tonight is going to be a blessing. So you guys, this is unpretentious. We're just gonna have a conversation. And as you can see the crawler on the screen, our special guest tonight, um, his name is Roy King Jackson. And um, he recently, he lost his mother a little over a year ago. I had the pleasure of knowing his mother. His mother was a great lady, but I'll let him talk about her. Um, but I noticed him grieving on social media. I, I noticed he was very upfront talking about the grief. And so I thought about, you know, how great would it be to just have a conversation with him um, as a man, a manly man, to talk about grieving. So without further ado, you guys, I want to bring up for this conversation tonight, he's kicking off our series of conversations about grief, Roy King Jackson. Welcome, Roy. Thank you. Thank you. It's a, it's a blessing and an honor to be here. And um, yes, thank you for having me. Yeah. So, you know, as I mentioned, um, just kind of in the opener, I remember you, you know, typing out on Facebook, just putting out on Facebook, you know, just that you were grieving, you know, that you needed prayers and, and all of that. And so, you know, one of the things is, is that I think that I was just really um, surprised and just really refreshed with your willingness to be vulnerable. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about, you know, just why you are so open and willing to talk about grief? You know, so um, I'm a talker. And one thing that a grief can do to you is, is change kind of your makeup. It can really change um, your, it'll change your day to day. It'll change uh, your communication style. Um, and so when it came to me, I just, the, um, um, I would keep it all on the side and it was just some days I just needed an outlet and I'm, I'm pretty big on social media and I try to keep it to more, um, you know, God based and business based. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was, um, going past her page and going through different pictures, people share her pictures online and I would share them. And, um, I just felt that. I was just going to be transparent that day and just say, um, just say, how, just type or post how I felt. Yeah. And I just, um, and we can get to that later, but it definitely helped me. Good. It definitely helped me. Good, good, good. So we're going to be definitely talking about, you know, what helped you to be able to, you know, walk through this grief and all of that. But I want to backtrack a little bit because sure. I mentioned that I had the opportunity to know your mom and. I would I would go like way too long talking about just how she <laughs> helped and impacted me as a young woman in ministry. But for those that may not have known your mom, just tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about her and um, also tell us a little bit about um, her, her time of leaving this earth. Sure. So my mom, um, Phyllis Folks, uh, First Lady Phyllis Folks, 
Um, um, phenomenal woman, amazing woman of God. Um, it was, my mom was just, um, she was uh, bold. She was uh, on fire for, for the Lord. I just knew my mom loved the Lord. Yeah. And so she um, was just, um, her, she had such a giving heart. I mean, um, her and my dad would move in families during Christmas time. And so a lot of times they had uh, kids. So I kind of loved it. Sometimes my big brother did like, you know, how come we can't have our family to ourselves, our home to ourselves. But uh, it was the beginning of ministry on a different level. Um, my mother, Phyllis folks was just, uh, so much of a fighter. She was just so much a fighter. And I'll tell you more, she was just a fighter. Um, she was, um, a visionary. She, um, she loved people. She loved God's people. She loved people in general. She loved to give. Giving became a part of her makeup, a part of her, um, just her essence and being. She really grabbed onto what the Lord says about being a giver. And if it wasn't money, it was her time or her skill set or her availability or her connections. If you needed something from someone, needed something, she couldn't do it. She could find someone that could help. Yeah. And so, um, so just just an outstanding woman. I know a lot of people will say that about their moms. She's great. She's this. But um, the testimony and the testament of the, the lady that, that she was speaks through the people that she came in contact with. Absolutely. Um, and yeah. so you provided um, some pictures of your mom. And so yeah. I want to try to get those on the screen because I think it's sure. always good, you know, for people to just be able to have a visual. And so sure. for those of y'all that are joining in, this is a picture of Roy with his mom, First Lady Phyllis Foltz. And um, so your mom, she passed away um, yes. in uh, April of 2019. Um, as you talk about your mom now and knowing that we're having this conversation about grief, you know, what type of emotions come up for you this evening? So, you know, it has been a, a whirlwind of emotions. Um, grief will um, uh, grip you and grab you and it, it can it can it can cause you to um, act in different ways. My mother's passing affected me in areas I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. And that's a level of grief that I'm learning. Grief is a process, mm -hmm. um, especially um, a, a loss so close and so near and dear. Um, so I, uh, when I see pictures of my mom, her strength and resiliency, which is speaks to her, like even when I'm sad and really miss her, um, I still can hear her saying, all right now, Jay, yeah. all right now, don't stay down. Uh, I, I can, uh, buy, uh, we, we have three children and I hear her voice all the time. They get in trouble or I fuss at them some and she'll say, all right, now, now let the, let the punishment fit the crime now. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so her voice and her impact still directs me, um, in my life. It yeah. still directs me in my life. Yeah. So, um, I just put another picture of your mom uh, yes. looking like she was worshiping in church. Yes. Um, you mentioned, you said that the grief impacted you in ways that you didn't even expect. Can you just elaborate a little bit about that? Sure. So full transparency, when my mom passed, it was, it was so much of a shock because her trajectory was she got, she was very sick. My mom had been sick almost her entire life mm -hmm. and she had fought through cancer, um, back surgeries, thyroid issues, um, congestive heart failure. I mean, my mother was a fighter. And so she pushed through. And so, so when, it came, when it comes to the grief affecting me, a couple, one, one of the first levels I knew the grief affected me was when I was going to church. I was so used to my mom being there. She's also my first lady. And so when I would, when I, as soon as I walked in the building and we had the building kind of decked out in her honor, it was tough walking in the building. Um, it was tough. Any parts of the service, um, was tough. I can see her still walking around. I can see her still walking, um, uh, doing offering time to go into the office to, um, to pre-prepare the offering. Mm -hmm. And that became very tough. Um, our sanctuary became a tough place for me because I'm used to her singing. She was our worship leader. 
So my mom's not singing. So even the song she would sing months after she passed affected me in a, I did not want to hear those songs. They made me want to break down because I uh, just could not, I could not um, emotionally stomach uh, so many elements because she was so involved. I saw my mom multiple times a week yeah. um, between services. And if I didn't, I saw on Sundays for sure. And so it affected me. It affected my, um, my worship time, which was shocking. I felt like, whoa, worship is unto God. This is his space alone. But even worshiping to the music, I would think about her singing it. And it, it affected my worship time. It affected my prayer time. I had regret. Uh, I felt that um, I would pray, but my heart was just like, Lord, help me. Mm -hmm. Even the scripture talks about people. Uh, scripture talks about help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Lord, help me through my grief. Mm -hmm. I didn't really understand. So it affected every area of my life. And specifically, like I said, I really knew that I was in a, in a different space. I didn't know how to label it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was labeled as grief. Mm -hmm. I just knew I feel different. My world is different. My life mm -hmm. is different. And so I, grief is a word, is a word that's being put on it. And I understand, but I didn't, it didn't correlate with me. Oh, this is sure. grief. I was right. just hurting. Right. And I think that's a really good point. You said a, you said a couple of things. The the yeah. first thing that rang out to me was, you know, usually I, from what I understand, that when we are grieving, we run to church. That the yeah. sanctuary is a place where we meet and encounter God and receive healing. But for you, because of the stature and the position that your mom had, the sanctuary wasn't necessarily a healing place for you. Right. It was actually a place that triggers you. Yes. And, um, you know, the second thing is, is that you knew that you were you, you were feeling different, but you didn't have a name for it. Right. And that's part of the reason why, you know, I wanted to have these conversations because so many people are going through grief, but they, you know, they may not have a name for it. Right. This is what, you know, that this is what it is. And, you know, grief, grieving is normal. We're, we're all going to go through one, at least one type of big type of loss in yes. our lives. And I think as Christians, as we, you know, talk about it authentically and transparently. Yes. So you mentioned that um, at least initially it was hard for you to go to church. Um, yes. You know, what did what did grieving look like for you um, soon after your mom passed? And what does it look like for you now? So soon after she passed, um, how what grief looked like for me? Um, I tried to go back to work. Mm -hmm. So I have um, multiple businesses, but I also have a uh, nine to five or it's retail. So. And so I've been I've been in this industry for oh, about 10 years. And so I tried to go back to work. Work was rough for me mm -hmm. uh, because emotionally I just wasn't there. I felt it, it It took a minute for grief to really set in because I think one of the stages you go through um, either disbelief or not really understanding or not really hitting you that, whoa, OK, my mom is gone. <clears throat> because during your regular day where you would not see her anyway, mm -hmm. it pops up when you need to call her for something. Um, I take a lot of pictures. My mother likes uh, for me to send her pictures, especially of the grandkids. I grab my phone to text her a picture. Couldn't send her the picture. That broke me down. Yeah. Um, I listened to, I turned on my, I had a worship playlist that was awesome. Eyes be buried. It was like, it just really set you in an atmosphere. But that's the same playlist I used when I was going to the hospital 30 days straight every day to see my mom and praying she would make it through. Mm -hmm. So that playlist became extremely tough. It invoked in me a, a level of anxiety and fear like, okay, don't ever play that song again. And so I, uh, my, my worship music, my worship music in general, um, that changed uh, immediately um, after she died. Um, I needed some time off of work, try to go back to work. And I never had done this before in my life. I put in, talked to my doctor, and he said, you need some time off. Mm -hmm. And so I filled out paperwork to be 
to, uh, to be off work um, for a extended period of time, um, that let me know too. Yeah, you're not something you, you need some time. You need more time because they give you five days at your job. I feel that it's absolutely not enough time. Different people have different levels of grief. Some people's grief might come in later and they might need that time later. Mm -hmm. um, some need it immediately. Some people just get right into their regular flow of life and that is their way of coping with grief, getting back to a sense of normalcy in their life. So how it looks now, um, is it better? Yes. Um, it different things trigger. My children are getting older. I'm thinking about Gabby will be graduating from high school in a year and a half. My mom won't be there. Um, AJ uh, Peyton got a um, Peyton's going to be going to sixth grade. Um, it really hit me too going through our Christmas stuff the year after she, the, the year she passed because my mom would buy all kind of stuff for the for the great kids at different levels. So we're going through gifts and bags. My mom had bought levels of ages for the kids so they can grow into different ages. Broke me down. Um, it's just music is such a part of my life. I love music. Music is such a, such a part of my mother's life. So music, how much I love it, would trigger me. Now I can listen to um, uh, some um, even that same worship playlist. I still don't listen to. Mm -hmm. I got a, I got a new one. Right. I got so a new you're, one. You're not ready to listen to that uh, playlist. It's interesting that like those of us that knew your mom, you knew that, like you said, she was the worship leader at your church. Music is very big for you. I know your brother, he's in music. And mm -hmm. so music is a big part of your family. But yet, you know, instead of instead of that being something that, you know, your mom enjoy, it actually brings you pain. Right. It actually is a trigger. And I, yes. I think that's that's interesting, but it's real. It's and, real, right? uh, you know, that yeah, that that's just that's just part of grief. Right. Because it reminds you of your mom. I want to talk about you because um, you mentioned a couple of times like that. You broke down that, yes. you you know, went to the doctor and the doctor said, hey, you need more time. I want to talk yes. about you being a father and being a husband and being a son. Um, did you ever feel like ashamed or embarrassed? that um, you were really feeling so broken and fragile? You know, um, sometimes, I, sometimes I did. Sometimes I did. Um, my, my, my wife and my children, amazing support. Uh, my, my brothers, my dads, my, my god sisters and sisters, amazing support. Um, but we were all grieving, grieving. So, so what do you turn when everyone's grieving? And, um, and and I'll talk about later a couple of things I, I, I have done and I continue to do to move forward in that area. Um, being a father, missing his mom was tough for me um, because the grief took me back to, you know, I just wanted my mama. And so I, you see it in the movies or you see people going through that. And I didn't understand the impact of losing your mom. You know, I'll say my mom because different people have different relationships with their mothers. So um, we can't assume that everyone has a really close connection. Um, missing my mom, uh, losing my mom was extremely tough for me. So. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, so being a father and a husband, uh, my wife understood, but I spent a lot of days at the hospital, a lot of days. Uh, she was there for 30 days, and, I, and I'm pretty sure I went there every day. If I had to work, I got off work nine, uh, nine o'clock at night. I shot to Mercy Hospital. There's been times, I didn't mean to go back, I would have to fight the feeling to go back to Mercy Hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, between the uh, also the help of Apostle uh, Barbara McLean, I love her, it's like a spiritual godmother. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, I'll talk about that, Bishop Tony Lane. Um, just, just support. It's times that I, I had to fight the feeling. I wanted to go back to Mercy Hospital. Why? Because that's the last place I saw her alive. Yeah. And I, I, I was just going to go sit in, sit in the waiting rooms. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Grief, grief. Yes. On the screen, um, I have a picture of you, yes. um, yes. 
at, at your yeah. mother's bedside. Just can yes. you just tell us a little bit about sure. what that sure. picture is? So when my mom was in IC, when she was in ICU, it got extremely tricky there. Um, she was in a coma for eight days, I believe. Um, we had the family talk about um, Mrs. Folks might be the sickest and one of the sickest people in this entire hospital mm. to hear that. But to say the t- for my for the doctor to tell my dad, we need to have a family talk, have the family all come up. We're like, hold on, hold on, hold on. We pray and believe in God for complete healing. And so to go into that room and then multiple nurses come in and then the church, like, um, I guess, religious leader or the person in the church in, in, the, in the hospital comes in. It's like um, the chaplain, I think the name is. And they come in a room and film me come up and they have a TV in there and they talk about how uh, they showing the pictures of my mom's lungs, how they're compromised from the cancer and the the, the viral bacteria, the, the bacteria pneumonia and the viral back the viral pneumonia. You sit in there. And so so anyway, um, got to a point where God did uh, deliver and step in. My mom was able to come out the coma. And when she came out the coma, one of the nights I'm sitting there. It's a whole different level of anxiety that I tell people about. As I'm walking into my mom's hospital room, she, even though before she, before I registered that she said anything to me, I'm looking at right up at that monitor, the beeping for that monitor. I still can hear it. Um, her vitals, I can hear it. And she'll say, hey, Jay. But before I respond in those seconds, I've already calculated and looked at her blood pressure, her oxygen rate, her heart rate her pulse in them seconds. And it kind of, dic- f- you freeze like, oh, okay, she's doing good. Or I would say, hey, mom, hey, um, take a couple of breaths for me, a couple of deep breaths. Mm-hmm. And she'd be like, am I okay? I'm like, you're good. It's just your, your oxygen was a little bit low. And she'll blow into her thing and take a couple of deep breaths. And so that pitch you saw was, I'm going to give God the glory for this. He was saying to me, have devotion with your mom. She hasn't been able to go to church in so long. And it's the same devotion we would have when we were kids. We have our daily breads. We'll sit around. We have competition about who can uh, recite the books of the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I said, Mom, um, let's have, I want to have devotion with you. I'm going to do devotion. She's like, I said, I said, I said, later on, let's have devotion before you go to sleep. She said, uh, no, let's do it now. What we got to do? Mm-hmm. And so I said, okay. So the same way she would lead us in devotion, I was leading her in devotion. And she and my dad actually took that picture. And actually, I had done it when she was in ICU. But then she came up to the TCU, I believe. I continued it every day. And uh, the first time we had devotion or her raspy voice, not being able to really talk, she's saying, oh, it's Jesus. I think it's my Andre Couch, I think. And she's saying, oh, it's Jesus. And my mom had a beautiful voice. And she sang it and she prayed over me. Wow. And then after that, she... um. She would have me to pray because her oxygen. And, and so my dad captured that picture of us having devotion. And even up until the last day she passed, that actual day or leading up until that time, uh, I said, Mom, let's have devotion again. Mm-hmm. And uh, she really appreciated that. So that was me having devotion with my mom. For those of you all that are just now joining, this is a series on grief. We're just having a conversation about grief. And our guest for tonight, is Roy King Jackson. His mother was Phyllis Folks and she passed away last year. And Roy is just really sharing his story on how he's grieving, what grief looks like for him. And he's also going to share some strategies to help you um, if you find yourself in the midst of grieving. Um, And really, this conversation is really to just dismantle any strongholds from the enemy to try to make you feel that something's wrong with you, that you're not a Christian or that you don't have faith in God because you feel sad or because you're grieving a loss. Um, You know, we are natural beings. God created us as tripart beings with a soul, a spirit and a body. And grief, you know, is an emotion um, that we all go through. Um, Roy, before you give just some practical tips um, to help people who are grieving, I'm curious to know, um, you mentioned earlier that that your mother's death, it was a shock, even though she had been kind of, you know, sickly for a lot of her life. I am curious, um, Mm -hmm. did you ever have any visions, any dreams, any prophetic words to kind of warn you? 
you know, my mom was so, she was sick for the majority of her life. And it's, this is my first time saying this. I always, I always kept my phone on at night. Some people turn their phone off, but I always kept my phone on, but I would turn it on silent, but keep it up in case it lit up with a call. And so honestly, I, I had thought about multiple times of getting a call from my dad saying that I'm rushing him out to the hospital. I'm rushing him out to the hospital. And so, you know, my mother's strength through her sickness can, could, it gave you a, a, it gave you kind of a false sense of that she will always be here. And so, um, I would, honestly, I would pray, Lord, please let me keep my mom for my entire life. Like my mom is only 50 something years old at the time, 40 something years old. So to be fully transparent, fully transparent with you, I had just prayed and I felt that my mom go through a lot of sickness. I don't know. And then we, we had just got the word about the congestive heart failure. How that's going, mom. Then the cancer had came back and for her to be have viral pneumonia and bacterial pneumonia and then to be in a coma i'm like lord this can't be today it just didn't seem and that's how death creeps up on you it can creep up on you i said this can't be today and then so i didn't have any visions but i definitely had thoughts mm -hmm. that my mom has been through so much and so much a fighter how long will god allow her to continue to go through sickness like this before he called her home yeah. And so I um it was when she went into the hospital, shocking but not shocking cuz she was very sick, very sick. And I just um after so long, you want the, you want the person that's uh hurting to not hurt anymore and I was hoping that I was wrong about it and but I I definitely had thoughts that yeah. yeah. So that that brings me so do you feel like even in your grief, um, was there, you know, um, there's like the Kubler Moss stages of grief, you know, yeah. where there's mm -hmm. like the denial, there's the anger, there's the bargaining. Um, yeah. Did you go through anger at God? I did. I did. Um, me and my brothers and my father has had a meeting just to kind of uh, see how we were all were doing. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I was upset with God. I was upset because I said, God, why did you allow my mom, mom's body to be beat up with sickness so bad that at the end, she said, I'm tired. And I felt cheated. I felt cheated. I felt that God cheated me. I feel like he cheated me um, and my children. Um, I didn't feel like he cheated her because my mother's uh, death in hindsight, was a beautiful death. She went in peace. I asked my mom, mom, are you afraid? Well, really what I was trying to say, what I was saying was, mom, I'm afraid yeah. to lose you. And I said, mom, are you afraid? And she looked at me and said, nope. Just like that, nope. And she was just had, a, had, had so much of a peace in her. And it, it helped me. It helped all of us, I think. It was tough. But my mother being at peace, not fighting. And, and th this is also a gift from God. That's a gift from God that my mother was able to go. She was at peace and she wasn't begging or clawing for her life. Um, she was going through, actually, God had done a wondrous work of bringing her back from the ICU, oxygen getting up. And so she, um, yes, I went through, I was angry that I, that I, I couldn't call my mom anymore. I was angry that the music that I love um, now in, triggers me to um, extremely emotional, to tears. Um, I felt cheated that um, I don't have a photographic memory, but I, I have I have a pretty good memory when it comes to attaching events and feelings to different places. And that's what we do in music, too. Music is like a chest for us, for people. When you listen to a song, you unpack the emotions you have at that time inside that song. So when you hear the song again, it, it becomes, it unpacks. And so for me, it's a song, um, uh, a remake by uh, an artist named Avant and the song Selling, the song Selling. And I put it on my Facebook page a couple weeks ago. 
And what made that song so special was I love that song. What made it so special was when we went to the married couples event in Branson, uh, me and my mom have a picture. I couldn't find it sitting next to each other. And my mom said, Leroy, you and Lisa play y'all playlist because they was playing some real, real old school uh, <laughs> music. And mm -hmm. I, it was an honor. My mom said, play some of y'all music. Y'all got some. You got, and so we would play, you know, some, you know, some really good, you know, uh, R&B and Maxwell and stuff like that. And so uh, she started singing Selling. And I'm sitting right next to her and I hear my mom singing a song. And it's just, it was beautiful. And so when you listen to the lyrics of the song, it's like, wow. Um, not, for, not too far from paradise, at least it's not for me. But when the wind is right, I can, I can fly away and find security. Like, it's, it was so uh, artistic and elegant. It was so, uh, and so when I think back, that song for me. So I, I will play that song sometimes and allow it to take me emotionally where I really don't want to go, but sometimes I feel like I need to go. Yeah, I think that's that's really good. Um, I had a conversation with my therapist today and we were talking about grief. Um, and, you know, we really talked about that. I have not properly grieved the loss of my father, which was like almost a little under 15 years ago. So I was one of those people that was just kind of very cerebral. OK, this is what I have to do. Let me just do this. Let me do that. And not really taking that time to grieve um, because I wanted to just not think about it. Right. But we talk about that when you do not properly grieve. What happens is, is that grief comes out and it comes out sideways and usually maladaptive behaviors. So my grief came out in drinking, um, just kind of wild living. At that time, um, I did not have a relationship with God like I have now. Um, so it came out a lot with just promiscuity and just really hurt and bleeding all over the place. Um, and so I want to ask you this um, with your grief. Were there any like maladaptive behaviors that you found yourself going to instead of just kind of allowing yourself to cry, allowing that release in a healthy way? You know, my my language became more secular than it needed to be. Um, I expressing myself, being short, quick tempered, um, just being like, whatever, or whatever attitude. Um, it affected levels of my marriage because I was disconnected. I was, I didn't want to hear, like, I felt my mom is gone. You guys don't get it. And and I'm not the kind of person who wants to sit in an emotion. So it, it really threw me like I've been pretty good at helping people like talk with them. Um, I'm a youth elevation coach to help youth. And young, and I'm, I'm a director. And I'm a youth teacher. And even at work, all my, my, my staff is always around 20, 21 years old. So they'll come to me with life situations and stuff like that. And so um, my language, my focus, my devotion was affected, um, not getting at my word like I should. Um, even scriptures I would come across. I could hear my mom saying it in church or saying it to him when I was a kid. And um, that was, yeah, it was, it, it, it manifested in different areas that I was not pleased with. Like, okay, what is up with me? Mm -hmm. Why am I, am I in a backslidden stage? Mm -hmm. Am I, um, and it's, it's just, yeah, it's different things like that, different struggles, you know, um, just I, I was delivered from that. I'm over that. What is up with that? Where did this come from? Where did this language come from? Like, what is going on? And a lot would be saying to, it was saying it to myself, you know, getting frustrated really easy. So, yes, absolutely. And, you know, like I said, uh, walking with Christ and um, I heard somebody say uh, paper, paperback Bible say. Uh, got up <laughs> in the church and 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 just loving the Lord, I just really felt um, that I um, was letting him down. But I was just felt like it, it, it was weird. It was just weird. Yeah. So, so ask your question. Yes. And, and I appreciate your transparency because I think that's one of the things that we need to be aware of as believers that maybe we aren't in a season of grief, but we know. Um, there are loved ones, our church members are just people around us that may be grieving. They need to be covered because yes. the enemy is going to come in and grief does all types of things to the body. 
WebMD oh. talks about that grief causes inflammation. Your um, immune system is yes. low, decreased, um, fatigue, dizziness, you know, uh, eating, digestive, digestive oh, issues. Oh, yes. You know, yes. it also does something to the central nervous system. And so grief, you know, it impacts our behaviors. It can trigger you know, kind of basically like backsliding and all of that. And so, yes. you know, we need to be in prayer for those that are grieving. Um, so you mentioned some of the maladaptive behaviors. Tell us, how did you get back on track and just some advice? So, so those all, that, yeah. So, so also, um, I got on uh, a medication for anxiety. I reached out to a couple of my trusted um, aunties and uncles in the faith, asked them about it. They gave me their experience with them if they had it. And I told them what the doctor's trying to put me on. My wife, she would research it like, okay, yes, take that. Or uh, I wouldn't take that one. That one's going to have you like a zombie. It's going to be too strong because you, you didn't have a life of taking any kind of medicine or anything like that. So um, I would have her look at the side effects. If I feel in a certain way, I would say I'm feeling this and feeling that. And she wouldn't tell me the side effects. But if it was one, she would say, you know what? That's a side effect. That's a side effect. So my wife, Lisa, was super supportive and helping me um, with uh, all areas. She was grieving, too, though. Yeah. Uh, she is still grieving from her father dying, her and her brother. So what grief can do is hope, hope, help you to identify and see other people's grief. So I'm more sensitive to a person losing a loved one, losing a mother. When I see a person sit, put on Facebook or somewhere, pray for my mom, my mom's ill. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go in because I understand how painful that can be. And the flip side of grief is who's left behind. My dad was so he had to pastor church. And still uh, be a father and a friend, minister of the gospel, go to work. So his grief, I would come to church and be doing good. I would see his grief. It break me down. It break me down. And so um, so some things that I've done to adapt. Um, um, I, I still take, I still take the, the, the pill that the, 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 the anti-anxiety the doctor gave me, uh, is very small, uh, non, um, uh, at, um, it's not, it's not addictive. So thank God for that. Cause I told him I'm not taking it. It's like my mom, uh-uh, doc, uh-uh, I ain't gonna take it if, if it's so, I, right. um, have it for so, yeah. you. Like, you yeah, don't want to I don't want, if it's happens, nope. I, I got Jesus with me and Jesus to be my anti-anxiety. And he'll be my uh, whatever pill I need. And so um, I was going to counseling. Uh, I went to counseling. Um, I will say this a little bit back. You said that I have any visions or anything like that. No, but I'll say this. The Christmas before my mom passed, I was in a bad spot. I had bad anxiety, heart racing, body aches. Um, uh, Apostle Barbara McLean said she spoke to me and said it's a spirit of foreboding of imminent death. You're going to die. And I just felt like uh, I couldn't sleep in my bed. Um, it was it was so bad and weird. And my mom, I had crazy and wonderful support. My mom would send me um, scriptures in the morning. I still read them. I was thinking about this morning. So I heard a scripture to help me through this. And so that was a weird season. I wouldn't eat. I lost about 16 pounds in like a week and a half. I'm like, Lord, what is up with me? And I was turning 40. So I, I'm like, well, my doctor said, you just scared you turning 40. And so it was a weird season though. Some of it, I feel like God was somewhat preparing me, like working me out in the gym. And so when, I, when my mom passed, I didn't, I didn't completely crumble. I felt extremely fragile, but I didn't crumble. So uh, I go to counsel. I go to therapy. Um, therapy is really good for me. Um, during these times, I like to get sunshine. I'll just drive. I'll drive. Uh, Lisa will say, uh, where are you going now? I go to Michael's. I'll give me some vinyl. And these are legitimate places. But I'll get up and go. And sometimes I tell them I'm going to Creve Corps Park and let the sun just hit me in the face and just sit in my car. And I had to understand that's OK. Like, it's OK because I'm used to going, going, going. And, and uh, I took a trip down to Atlanta to see my Aunt Rose. Um, I had a little trepidation about going by myself because like, I'll take the family with me. And Lisa was like, my wife was like, no, 
go by yourself. You need to go. My Rose would say, come down. Mm -hmm. And it was so therapeutic. It's the same. My mom went down there in the same bed she slept in, I slept in. My uh, Rose reminds me of my mom. Yeah. So I was able to talk to her. She's able to tell me stories about my mom when my mom was a kid. Yeah. And so I got a chance to eat some good food and just be out of my element. And it definitely blessed me. So I have more of those planned for next year, depending on how everything going with travel and everything. I'm going to be safe. Um, so I have what, what grief has done for me has helped me to learn about what God says about rest, what he says about um, grief, what he says about it's just it just opened me up to see God in a more broad father friend position that I've not left you. Mm -hmm. um, um, the words of my mother now come back to me even more to help me to go forward in this new season. So it's it's a it's a ministering to me, too. Uh, so, yes, I therapy, talking to friends, um, how I'm feeling. Um, uh, yeah, that, those are just just therapy has been very, very good for me. Therapy. Uh, and yeah, that's so good. And I'm glad that, you know, you are, you know, able to say like therapy has been a blessing for you. You know, there's like this whole stigma, especially in the African-American community, particularly with men um, who don't want to go to therapy. And one of the things you mentioned about. Uh, seeing your father break down, seeing him and his grief that would also, you know, basically make you emotional and cause you to grieve as well. But what it also um, tells me is that your father was secure enough to to not have to wear a mask in front of people yes. and to say, hey, I'm grieving and I'm broken. And I think that is where God wants us to be, because if we just wear these masks, we're not helping people because we're all going to go through situations. And as leaders, we have to be willing to say, you know what, I'm broken. I'm broken mm -hmm. inside. You know, the trusted people, of course, but not to be afraid um, to just be honest and authentic. And I think that that helps other people as well. Um, any closing remarks that you want to say before I have you pray us out? You know, it's um, grief is a part of life. Um, like I said, we, we grieve on what was. We grieve on what's uh, what's not going to be in the future. Um, we 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 can we grieve um, your current position. You even grieve within yourself. Like I have changed. I've allowed this to change me. Wow. And so it is something that we all. Death is a part of life. I've never been a big. Uh, I understand about uh, going to be with the Lord when you pass away, but I've I've never been extremely really comfortable when it comes to death. God is still working on me when it comes to that. And so um, what I will say is the people that are in your life and we, we've, we've seen this in movies. Don't let don't let the sun go down before you make that right. That's that's still biblical, but also practical in life is any relationship that you have. Do your best to make them right. Make them right. Um, even the healthy relationships you have strengthen them even more. Because you just never know. Death is so final when it comes to an earthly realm. Um, and my, my relationship excuse me, with, with the Lord, I'm making it even stronger. Why? Because I want to see my mama again one day anyway. And I'm going to see her again. And she and I want and her her saying that she had was serve God well. So I go forward to I'm going to serve God well. That's what helped break me through some of the things that I wasn't too proud of. So I would any kind of relationship. Well, take your time to rest if you're grieving. Be honest with yourself. Be, if you need to get some help, some therapy or counseling, do that. It can be a good thing. Uh, there's no one size fits all when it comes to therapy and counseling. So sometimes you might have to find a different one that kind of ties into that. Um, be okay with being transparent and vulnerable. Uh, Patricia, um, um, Elder Patricia Allen at our church, I just I miss my mom's hug. So I went over after church. I just laid my head on her shoulder and she just helped me. I needed that. Uh, Mother Patricia Allen, my mother, me, Mother my Patricia Buchanan. Um, she was hugging me and say, hey, baby, how you doing? Remind me is my mom. I'd hug her. And so um, allow yourself to heal. Allow yourself to be transparent about it. Um, don't let it grip you forever. Move forward. My dad said it because he picked it up into his group and said, um, you don't move on. You move forward. And just keep moving forward. Um, 
and know that God understands about loss. He understands about having a friend that died. He understands about uh, even not to go too deep, even being forsaken by the father. Imagine the anxiety he had in the garden. Like, so it is, um, I would, if you don't have a relationship with the Lord, um, get one. And if you have a relationship with God, get closer. Men fences, men relationships, and, and don't move on, but definitely move forward. Move forward move forward and you are an example of what it's like moving forward and um you move forward even if you feel grief you know but you're moving forward um and i think that that's one of the the biggest things that i hope to convey through these conversations is that even while grieving because grief comes in waves you can still move forward that there's hope um yes. and so Roy, thank you so much for sharing your story today and for just ministering to us just in a conversation. And so I'm going to ask for you to just pray um, sure. for those that may be going through grief right now. Sure. Father God, we come to the name of Jesus, Lord. You are a great God. You are amazing God. You are um, you are uh, ever so present with us, Lord. You are undefeated. You are a champion. You are a king. You've never lost a battle. You've never lost one of us, Father. And we appreciate you and we thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Father, God, I come to you right now, Father, uh, on behalf of anyone who is going through grief, who's went through grief, who's going through grief, who, or who's going to go through grief, Lord. I pray that you send a supernatural head of protection around their heart and their mind, that they have full understanding and full clarity uh, of what's going on with them, what it looks like. There is no there is no checklist of grief, Father. It manifests in different ways. But Father, incline their ears and their heart. Make their heart a heart of flesh, not a heart of stone, where they're open to you, that you can speak to them when, when it comes to grief and in the areas of their life that it affects, Father. I pray that anyone looking or listening on, Father, would mend those relationships, any relationships, uh, and allow themselves to be healed when, by people that have hurt them. There are people who are going through grief has been 10, 20, 30 years and they don't know how to escape it. I pray, Father, that you get them clarity, understanding, illumination, that you comfort them. Let all these things draw them closer to you. Be their God. Father, speak to them in a clear voice like you never have before. Touch them, Father. And we will rejoice with them because they would not be gripped in grief. They would not be um, uh, um, prison in depression. We, I come against for the depression and suicide from people who have gone through grief. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I come, Father, you are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are Jehovah Shalom, Father. You are peace. You are our healer, Father. And so I speak right now in the name of Jesus. And I come against for the suicide, depression, over-medication, self-medicating, Father being reclusive, Lord. I come against that in the name of Jesus. Get them clear eyes, a clear heart, clear emotional um, carrying capacity, Lord, to go forward and to breathe and to rest, Father. In the name of Jesus, it is so. It's decreed, it's declared. I take dominion in this earth given by you and they will see these things manifest in this, in this life, Lord. In Jesus' precious and amazing name, it is so. Amen. Amen. And just as you were praying, I just want to, um, the Lord just put this in my heart and I just want to decree and speak this, that, you know, there are some that are watching this and the Lord is like, what the enemy meant for bad, God is going to mm -hmm. use it for good. Yes. That what the enemy is using or what he thought would try to break you, you know, God is saying he's going to use it for good. And I really feel like the Lord wants um, those of you that are in the midst of grieving to know that God is like, I'll never abandon you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I am with you. And so this is just a word just to encourage you that God is speaking to you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Yes, and it's almost like a stepping stone yes. that what was meant to kill you, God is like, look, this is going to be used for promotion, for elevation. This is using for even greater anointing and for strengthening you. So you can do my work. And so, Roy, I even feel like that word is for you as well. Yes, I that you're just even like a greater anointing, a greater sense of purpose and authority. And so I just speak over you um, that, you know, what the enemy meant for bad, God is using it for good. And I pray that God opens and just brings even more doors 
for you to share your story and for you to share your wisdom, always pointing the way up to him. So thank you so much. Yes. All right. God bless you. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank and you. And also, you know what, Roy, before you go, this mm -hmm. is a conversation and normally yeah. um, comments show up on the screen, but for some reason they are not showing up on the screen. Mm -hmm. So if you are willing for those of you that are watching this video, whether you're watching the replay, um, if you have a question for Roy, will you just put it in the comments and Roy, please feel free to respond to sure, them. OK, right. and I'll tag you as well. So we want to we want to have a conversation. So if you have questions about grief or just anything um, that he may have spoke ab spoken about or maybe you just want to connect uh, with him and his ministry, just put it in the comments and um, he'll be able to read them and he can reply. All right. OK, Roy, thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Right, thank you. Later. So, um well, you guys, I pray that this has been a blessing for you. It was certainly a blessing for me. Um, as I mentioned, we're going to just continue this series, a, a series on grief. And so I have different guests throughout the week that will be sharing their story. Um, tomorrow, Sonia McClendon, she is going to be sharing her story about how she has grieved and really how she has dealt with the loss of her son. Now her interview is going to be tomorrow at 1 p.m. Okay. So if you can watch it live, join us. If not, you can catch the replay, but we're just going to continue to have uh, these conversations after Sonia, my husband, uh, Pastor Al, he's going to be talking about grief. He's going to be talking about grieving what once was. Some of you all know his story. Uh, last year he was diagnosed with cancer. Um, about a month ago, he had a stroke. And so, you know what? Um, grieving is not always a death, but sometimes it's grieving what used to be. So he's going to be sharing about that experience as well. More than anything, you guys, I pray um, that you guys are encouraged. I pray that this was a blessing for you. And I hope that you will join me back tomorrow for the conversation with grief with our special guest, Sonia McClendon. All right. Be blessed. Bye.